After over 30 years of being the star of his own video games, Mario has amassed a pretty cool library of core moves, and I wanted to see if we can try and recreate some of them in Game Builder Garage. So this first part today is going to be on the basic ground pound, and the next one will be on the dive, which a few of you have been asking for. Now the ground pound is pretty simple. You jump up and then you press a button which will cause Mario to plummet towards the ground and hit it with some force. It's usually the crouch button. We're starting with our red person Nodon character, our Mario wannabe, and right now he can't really do much, but we're going to teach him how to ground pound so he can smash this crate for some entertainment. We're going to start with a moving box object and shrink it down a little bit and attach it to the person Nodon. We'll make it invisible, non-solid, with a connection point of center center, and we'll leave everything else pretty much standard. We're going to control when our Mario character is ground pounding with a flag, but we'll use a button set to on press to activate that flag and turn it on. We we'll use the ZR button in this case and connect it to the flag's on input. Then we'll get an inversion node on so that we can take the positive one signal and send it into our moving object. Normally, when we want to increase the value of one for something like a moving object, I might use a calculate node on, but I actually found something pretty cool from a viewer, Mr. Observador, where you can use a map node on with an input of zero to one and an output of zero to your desired multiple. In this case, five. So when our flag input goes through the map, it will change from 1 to 5 and then get inverted to a negative 5 that goes into the Y input of the moving box. We'll then want some way of determining once we've touched the floor so that we can turn off our flag. We'll use a touch sensor that's checking for anything that might possibly make up the floor with a connection point of Y positive, Y negative so that it's directly underneath our player. We'll attach that to the person and we'll send that output into the flag's off input. So once we touch the floor, we'll turn off the flag. We can then use the flag output to do things like animate the character. We can plug it into the action slot. Another thing we can do is use an AND node on to get the flag output and the touch sensor output. During that one frame, before the flag gets turned off, we can use this output to set up a sound and an effect. We can use whatever collision sound you think fits best and an effect like smoke to most closely replicate how the ground pound works in most games. Finally, we'll want to be able to destroy things underneath the player, so we'll call on our destroy object node on. We can set it to Y positive, Y negative again so that it's underneath the player, and we can set it to destroy whatever objects in the world we want to be able to destroy. Simple enough. For the input, we'll take that flag, because whenever he is ground pounding, he will be able to destroy. Then you just make sure that the objects in your world are destructible, and you should be good to go. We've pretty much completed our ground pound. I forgot to change the effect node on to world, so it's a little overbearing, but once we do that, it looks much more natural. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and in a few days, I'll also upload the diving video. It's-a me, a Mario. 